Hello and welcome in RCF with the part 2 of the video tutorial about the new release of RDNet 3.0. In part 1, we did a global overview of the software with the basic setting to start working. In this part, we start to go deeper in the software functionality. RDNet software has two operating modes, offline mode, workspace design mode, and online mode, system management mode. The offline mode is used when the speakers are not connected yet and provides all necessary tools for the virtual design of a system. The offline mode is useful in cases where we have complex multi-speaker system with delay towers, front fill, etc. because doing the project offline we can work before going to the venue, saving time during the tuning process. It is possible to add, remove or drag objects in the workspace deciding how they should be interconnected to one another and what controller port will be linked to the speakers. So, let's add some speakers offline in order to have an overview of the tools that we can use to manage our workspace. Go to the Workspace Design menu and select Add Object. On the left, we can select the model of the speakers that we need to add. In this case, for example, we add 8 modules of HDL58 for the main system left, that will be connected to the controller 1, line 1. Click Add or drag directly the devices on the workspace. Now, add other 8 modules for the main right that will be connected in the controller 1, line 2, and 8 sub 9007 AES that will be connected to the controller 1, line 3. To complete the system, let's add 4 HDL38 as front fill in the line 4 of the controller. Now we can close the Add Object window and we should move the speakers as they will be in the venue. For instance, place the main left in the left area as well as the main right. During this work, we can use the zoom function to adapt the size of the cluster to our workspace. Holding down the right button of the mouse, we have the pan tools that allows to drag the entire workspace as well as the mouse wheel that can be used to zoom in and out quickly. If our sub setup will be a straight line, we can arrange the subs simply placing the first one on the left and overlapping the others one by one. They will automatically take the right position aligned with the previous one. It is not necessary to place the devices in this way, but in my opinion it is convenient to have a synoptic representation of the system as we see in the venue. We can do the same with the line array modules by overlapping them in the vertical plane and they automatically will be aligned each other. This notice means that the devices are not present. Indeed, we are working offline. By selecting background from the workspace design menu, we can also add an image as background. Select the proper format of the image file and open. We can change the dimension of the image and keeping open the background window, drag it till reaching the proper position and size. In this way, we can adjust the position of the speakers as they are in the venue, achieving also an elegant workspace. When we'll finish this job, it is possible to save the view in a preset. Click on the preset button and add the preset. Give it the right name, for example, main view, and click save. Now close the camera preset window. If we change the zoom level losing the workspace design, we can recall the main view quickly. After finishing the speaker placement work, I suggest to lock the workspace by pressing the proper button in the toolbar to prevent accidental movement of the modules. Now it is impossible to move the object in the workspace. Remember that when we'll be on the field, 
it will be important to connect the speaker in the proper line as the offline design. Otherwise, if for example in the Line 1 Erdinet found a Sub 9007 instead of an HDL58, there would be a conflict between the Erdinet project and the real system, so the synoptic would be useless. For now, let's zoom a single module to display its primary attributes. Device Logical Identification Number The unique address that the speaker will take within the system. Every ID is made of three numbers, from left to right. The first is the controller number. In this case, we have only one controller, but there are venues in which we can manage many controllers. The second is the controller line number. The third is the device number. Remember that all the devices are connected in DAISY chain. Starting from an object ID, it is possible to find its physical location in the Erdinet network. So, if for example we have a problem in the speaker 1, 2, 5, it means that we'll check the speaker number 5 in the right cluster, starting to count from the top one. This way to address the speaker is very helpful when we work with big system. Look at the icon of the speaker. It means that the previous device found in this position now, for some reason, is off. Device model name. High frequency current preset. Mute button. Menu button to assess the extended attributes, also accessible by right-clicking the object. Input signal level, view meters. Input signal level clip indication. Indication of connected device. Limiter intervention level. A Q button to assess the DSP parameters, equalization, gain, delay, etc. Low frequency current preset, that is the system cluster size. Device status of each way. Blinking green when the output level is normal. Yellow or red mean respectively soft and hard limiter intervention. All object attributes are not related to the functionality of the software, which is only a remote control, but only depend on device type and firmware. Therefore, attributes of different objects are not all the same and may have different appearance and parameters. In this case, we are talking about the attributes of an HDL 50A. Double-clicking the object, it will open the extended attribute window. Extended attributes are specific for each device. For instance, a line array speaker has extended attributes different from the ones of a point source speaker. For example, let's see the extended attributes of an HDL50A compared to those of a TT1A. As you can see, they are different. Let's analyze the attributes of the HDL50A. Group button to assign this speaker to a group. We'll talk about group and arrays in the next video. Limiter intervention level of each single way. View meter of the output level of each single way. Amplifier status of each single way. Green means OK, red means fault. Mute button of each single way. Device angle indication. Helpful when rigging the system, particularly when using two engines, and it is necessary to tilt the line array clusters manually. High frequency current preset. High frequency adjustment due to the air absorption according to humidity and temperature in a certain moment. Low frequency current preset that is the system cluster size. Solo button, a Q button to assess the DSP parameters, equalization, gain, delay, etc. Bypass or local button status. All Erdinet devices have a bypass or local button on their rear panel. This option concerns the device on board DSP about which configuration will be loaded when rebooting. If that button is released, the DSP will load the local manual settings. If that button is pressed, 
the DSP will load the last valid setting received by the network and will be able to be remote controlled by RDNet. In RDNet system, it is crucial that all devices have their bypass or local button pressed. It is thereby assured that even after a possible power interruption and restoring, the system keeps operating properly according to the last received configuration. RDNet software indicates the bypass or local button setup status by changing the color of the object ID and name on the workspace and also in the extended attributes windows. If the color is blue, it means that the bypass button on the device is released and must be pressed. This is the indication of the amplifier temperature, amplifier main voltage, cooling fan speed, graphical representation of equalization correction due to a preset, how to manage presets, equalization, groups and FIR bands will be discussed in the next part of these video tutorials. By pressing this button or clicking in the EQ button in the object icon, we'll assess at the DSP control section. The graphic user interface allows to load or save presets, equalization, gain and delay settings from or to the internal PC hard drive. We can change the parameters, typing the values as text input or placing the cursor on the parameters that we want to edit and using the mouse wheel to change the values. We can also edit the gain and the delay of the device. Remember that if the device is assigned to a group, the EQ, gain and delay setting will affect all the devices belong to the same group or array. That's all for the part two. Thank you for your attention and see you in the next video. Bye bye.